on today's episode of Video Marketing Madness, the future of video and marketing. And we'll even talk a little bit about some of the past things that were supposed to happen, but never did. And today's episode is made possible by freevideoeditor.co. If you're looking to start video editing and you don't want to spend those high prices on programs like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere or any of those others that are really great programs, by the way, but they are expensive, well, then head on over to freevideoeditor.co where you can download the Shotcut Video Editor and start editing like a pro instantly. We even have some extra great bonuses that you'll get with that. So you'll have a lot of great content to be able to use with the program as you begin your video editing. And that's at freevideoeditor.co. Leave off the last M for any M words here. Media. Leave off the last M for media. media. So check it out. Freevideoeditor.co. And with that, shall we hit the music, maestro? Please do. Please do. All right. Ethel, are you ready? Let's hit the music, Ethel. Wait, hold on. Ethel. Ethel's, uh, uh, she's making her way to the piano. Here we go. Okay, here we go. There she is. Neil Young. He's Ray the Video Guy. Yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at. Even if he's a little fat, he's filled with video expertise. He has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. For those of you watching the Facebook Live, Ray makes much better goofy faces than me. Yes, it's true. Now, did you notice that I said Ethel was running to the piano, but it's played on a, on a, uh, a ukulele? Ukulele, so yeah. So Ethel he's, was running to the good. ukulele, not the piano. Ukulele. And it's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray the Video Guy. And I'm Steve Sleeper on the Earn Dot Show podcast network. Yes. And we're on all the podcatchers. And it's good yes, stuff. We, 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 we've got a YouTube channel that I guess sucks. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. So um, I brought this up to Steve and I felt bad afterwards because I think he felt sad that I said it. But, you know, we do have a video, uh, a YouTube channel for video marketing madness. And Essentially, what it is, is we just take what we record and we just put it on YouTube so that we can yeah. share it, you know. Um, yeah. But I was actually called out today for it. Uh, I was called out by a, a, a potential student um, that I help with some of the video marketing stuff with and, and uh, or, or I'm going to be helping with video marketing. And, and he pointed out, hey, you know what? You've got this video marketing madness channel. And, and by the way, it, he also called me out on another channel that I have, too. He says, but it's not really like you don't really have it optimized. You don't have thumbnails and you don't, you know, it's, and, and I said, well, you know, honestly, we've never really used it for that purpose. You know, no. it was never meant to be a, a real YouTube channel. It was essentially a, just a repository to put videos so that we could share them on Facebook back in the day. But, um, you know, I took up the challenge from him and, and we're going to see if we can, uh, you know, kind of beef that up and, and maybe get some more subscribers and, and really turn that into a, a real YouTube channel. So we'll see what we can do. But I well, think I made it's, it's, Steve feel bad. I said. Yeah, you know, I've got to I felt that too. Go. So. Well, I'm an audio guy, so anytime I touch video, it's it's pedestrian. You know, otherwise yeah. it looks like crap, you know. So, <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we, 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 we need to do some work on it. We'll see what we can do. We'll get some pretty graphics and we'll, you know, get more subscribers on there and do all that fun stuff that we we always tell tell you on the show that you need to do, but then on, on some of my things we, we haven't done. But, you know, honestly, there are YouTube channels and then there are YouTube accounts where you put a bunch of videos. And there is a big difference between the two. And yeah, yeah. this was kind of a place where you just we just put videos. It wasn't meant to put really videos. be a channel in itself. But, yeah, we'll, we'll turn that around and we'll, uh, we'll make it into more of a user-friendly channel filled with goodies and try and get uh, some organic listens from that. So... Well, you know, the thing is, all of our views and listens come from either this Facebook Live that we're doing now or the podcatchers, yeah. the, the audio. And uh, we just uploaded the videos to YouTube. We get, I don't know, we get 15 each time. <laughs> so we'll turn that into 1,500 pretty soon instead. So, yeah. A billion. It, it was never, you know, and I don't even know if, I don't even know if every show is up on YouTube because I don't think in the beginning mm -hmm. we were doing it. No, you know? no. So but it's just kind of tossed up there. We we have for the last couple of years. No, we weren't. I wasn't even putting them up there in the beginning. So, well, now we, of course we have. For we actually have years. video when we do it live, so well, it makes well, it uh, well, more fun. 
when we first started, we didn't do video. Everybody's That's like, right. well, you're video marketing madness. Why aren't you doing video? <laughs> But it was, it was, oh, it was, it was an a podcast. audio podcast. Yeah, As we say, it's the podcast. radio show about video. Radio show about video. You know, I mean, there's a, there are radio shows about the Walking Dead. They don't have zombies. That's right. So there you go. That okay. doesn't make any sense, but you no, get what I'm no. saying anyway. But I'm trying to be <clears> Anyway, trying to be nice. so as I said at the top of the show, today we're going to be talking about the future. Of, I need an audio effect for that. I'm going to have to talk to the guys who create the software and Tell them they need to add audio effects so I can say in, in, the future, of future, video. future, future from a marketing, marketing, marketing. You know, yeah, there used to be a guy who was really good at that. He would, he would pretend he was in like a stadium, you know, be the, 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 the future, mm-hmm. tr- 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 blah, 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 blah. I can't yep. do it very well, but you get mm-hmm. the idea. They're going to talk about the future of video marketing because it is changing. And by the way, I should probably expand that beyond video marketing and just talking about. Um, some of the video marketing outlets and how they're changing because it's not all about video marketing per se that's changing. You know, obviously with YouTube's changes, if you're doing marketing with YouTube, you're going to see the changes. But also, if you're just doing a, an entertainment channel, you aren't necessarily doing marketing per se, and it's going to affect you in, in those ways as well. And um, quite frankly, the uh, YouTubes and the Facebooks and even the Amazons of the world are changing very rapidly. And, uh, you know, the way that we do video marketing, the way that we do video and entertainment and everything else is going through a massive change. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today because uh, I think it's going to be quite an interesting future. What do you think about that, Steve? Steve Steve-O? Steve-O. Yeah, you know, the, the, (laughs) you know, I got to be honest with you. The thing that I I probably don't know a whole lot about is uh, Amazon. Well, you know, and the reason is because. Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody does. I just haven't taken the time to uh, to learn about it. Well, you know, it, it, and there's, you know, there's unfortunately there's not a whole lot to pay attention to at this point in time, except for oh, okay. kind of watching where it's going. Um, there are some great things coming. There are some great things happening, but the future is is definitely something that they're looking at with that. But they have been for a while. I believe that we did an episode on YouTube. Uh, excuse me, on Amazon in their video like a year and a half ago, and really not Mm -hmm. much has changed since then. But they uh, just very recently have started to really put on the whole, we're a competitor to YouTube, we're going to be a competitor to YouTube um, stuff going on again. So it's, uh, you know, it it definitely can be, and I can see that coming. So let's talk a little bit about some uh, some of the outlets that we've talked about in the past, and we'll talk about the future and if they even have a future. And, uh, the first one we can talk about is, of course, YouTube. YouTube is the 800-pound gorilla in the room, even though uh, Facebook is, is reaching about 600 pounds at this point in time. Um, YouTube is the king of video, and they are also, in a lot of ways, the king of live video. Now, some of you may say, well, wait a minute, you know, Facebook Live, a lot more people are doing it, a lot more people are, are watching it, you know, it seems to be a bigger thing than, than YouTube Live. And I totally agree with that. That is probably the case. I I haven't looked at the numbers, but I would assume at this point in time, when it comes to production of of live videos and even watching of live videos, Facebook probably is well ahead at this point in time. However, I'm going to call YouTube the king of live video because they take it seriously. And what I mean by that, and it's not to say Facebook doesn't, but YouTube Live does very high-end video production yes. very easily. Now, YouTube Live and easily doesn't necessarily go together most of the time because YouTube Live is a little bit more complex than just jumping on like you can with Facebook Live, but you can do a lot of really high-end things on there very easily in comparison to you know doing a, a full production normally. Um, they have very high-end tools, high quality, so it's just a very robust, very strong, very stable platform Whereas on the other hand, Facebook Live is much more like a, a, uh, you know, a user-friendly version. You can do a lot of cool stuff, but you've got to do the cool stuff. There's going to be technical glitches. The video quality is probably not going to be quite as good. It's not going to be quite as reliable. It's, it's not necessarily a, a professional-grade uh, face uh, live system. Even though you can do professional-grade work on it, it's you know the actual... Uh, platform itself is probably not as professional grade as YouTube Live's platform is, but um, YouTube Live probably the kings there as far as the quality and, and the things you can do with it, and uh, 
you know, all that other fun stuff. And of course, uh, YouTube is the king when it comes to long-term traffic. You know, one of the advantages when we talk about Facebook, we talk about YouTube, YouTube is the place where you're going to just continually build your traffic. You put up a video today, it might get 10 views. Tomorrow, it might get 50 views. The next day, it might get 1,000 views. The next day, it might get 5,000 views. And, you know, a year from now, you're going to have a million views. Yes. The other thing is it makes you more visible on Google quickly more and over Google. time. I, I have yet to see a Facebook video show up on the first page of Google. So that, that is mm-hmm. definitely true. Uh, and, and I don't think we ever will, although I wish Facebook could figure out a way to, uh, to work on that because that would be nice. But no, it, it's definitely not uh, something that happens uh, very easily, certainly, uh, if at all, and probably not at all. In fact, I think uh, when it comes to that, Google has specifically said that it's very difficult for them to index Facebook or Instagram or Twitter because the content comes and goes so fast. It's not a permanent piece of, even though, you know, your video is going to be there forever. It's not, it's there and it's gone. It's there and it's gone. It's there and it's gone. And so they don't really index that stuff very well. It's not worth the time and effort to index a bunch of stuff that people are talking about today. You know, your, your, what you had for lunch today, probably not that important a week from now. So it's, uh, they're not going to take the time to index all that stuff. And so that's the issue that we run into there. Obviously, YouTube, you're going to get a lot more organic traffic. You're going to rank better. You're going to you know, get a lot of that. Yes, Steve? Uh, since we're on Facebook, I had a PBJ for lunch. That's very good. Excellent. Thank All you. right. So, and the, uh, the other thing with YouTube is that they are, of course, getting into mainstream media. And what I mean by that is they are starting to offer TV channels. And you can actually go in and purchase... Uh, in some areas, I don't know if it's all across the country yet. I know they started with, I think, yeah. six markets. Mm-hmm. Did and, you watch uh, the World Series? Uh, I did. I did not. I haven't watched they, any they, TV. They sponsored that, the World. They sponsored the World Series. I that did see that. I did see that they uh, that they sponsored mm-hmm. that, which was interesting. Uh, and I've seen their ads everywhere when I'm watching other things online about YouTube TV. Um, but uh, I've had it here in California. We we had it, and here in Atlanta area, we have it. We've had it, um, you know, the entire time, but now I think it's rolled out to just about everybody. But the point is, you can, instead of paying your cable company, you can now pay YouTube a smaller fee and get a handful of the channels. Now, it's not perfect yet. It doesn't run really well. I've tested it out. It works really great. Problem I've run into is that when you've got YouTube and then you've got PlayStation View and you've got, uh, you know, there's a, there's a handful of them that are doing this now. Um, None of them seem to carry everything I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and and yeah. so there's always like, oh, that YouTube one sounds good, but they don't have this channel, and that's the one I really want for this. And so then I don't do it, and then I look at the PlayStation one. Well, they don't have this channel. And, you know, so it yeah, becomes yeah. A, a guessing game as far as that goes. But the point being, YouTube moving into mainstream video production, mainstream video distribution, and uh, I would assume, you know, they've already started to make their own content. Um, and I could see them definitely using some of the more popular, you, you know, more popular user creation stuff into some sort of an actual channel in the future um, as part of those packages and, and whatnot. But uh, definitely something to watch out for. The question is, as they move into this more mainstream stuff, is that going to affect what they do with the average user? That remains to be seen. So if you're a YouTuber now, is it going to affect you now that they've got network TV shows competing against you in, in, in their own platform. I don't think it will, but you never know. It's something to keep your eye out on. Yes. You know, you know what it seems like? I looked at the channels and I looked at the interface and I watched it for free. It seems like it's really targeted to millennials yes. who are active, uh, who don't want cable or satellite and all that infrastructure. Um, and uh, it just gives them the channels they want to see. Uh, pretty big on sports, uh, yep. which they advertised heavily in the World Series, big on sports. And that, uh, you know, that to me was one of the things that really I, I, I questioned about. Is like, well, gee, I, you know, are you really going to be able to, to use this instead of cable if you're trying to watch live sports, you know, live this, live that? And, yeah, you can, and, and a lot of these platforms – are actually carrying local television in there as well. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember if YouTube is one of them or not. I don't um, 
think so, but don't quote me. But I've looked at like three or four different ones, and some of them, what they do is when you sign up and and you say, oh, I'm in the Atlanta area, well, then your CBS is actually your local CBS station being streamed to you. So they're actually pulling that out. And I can't recall, I apologize, I should probably check that out. I can't remember if YouTube was one that was doing that, but I know at least uh, some of the other platforms I looked at, that's how they were pulling in the content from those locations. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's the beginning of the end for the traditional cable and satellite outlets. And, and I've said that for a while, and now I really believe that with YouTube jumping in on this, PlayStation jumping in on this, uh, you know, Apple supposedly is jumping in on this as well. I, I don't see a big future for paying $200 for 300 channels that you don't care about. You know, and that's why I don't have cable at my house because of that very reason. So that you is... Watch TV? Yeah, there, there's the changes there. So that's YouTube changes coming there. Obviously, they've made a lot of different changes. Now, one of the things that they changed was to get rid of the clickable annotations. And that's something that we used to use quite a bit. And uh, quite honestly, I think that was a, a really big loss. I think that was a terrible loss Huge. for Huge. YouTube. Uh, I realize it didn't work with mobile. However, based on seeing how end screens work and work with mobile, I don't see why those things couldn't, you know, the clickable annotations couldn't work inside the actual platform. They did replace it with YouTube cards. Uh, quite honestly, cards aren't doing much for people, and, and I hope that they'll change that. Cards, you got to have 10,000 views yes. for it to be active. Well, and, and, and the same thing would have been the case for, for everything, you know, that it just would have mm-hmm. been that as well. But mm-hmm. the point being is that the cards, people don't know, you know, for those of you who don't know what YouTube cards are, essentially, uh, when you're watching a video, you can have at strategic points, little markers in your video that pop up a, a tiny little message in the top that says, you know, get a coupon now or whatever you want it to say. And you click a little tiny icon that looks like a, a letter I in a circle. And that brings up these little graphic cards that you can click on and go to your website. The problem is people aren't clicking on that little eye and even seeing them. Now, one advantage is they do work on mobile, and on mobile, at least with my phone, the cards actually appear directly below the video, so they're there all the time. So that's a little bit better, but overall, I I don't see anywhere near the type of clicks through cards as I used to with the clickable annotations. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, someday they'll address that, they'll add the annotations back in there, and if they do, you know, I could see them doing some really cool stuff with that, like allowing you to bring in your own graphic that way and put it in there rather than putting it in the video and uploading the video, bring in the video with an empty spot, put a graphic in as that and make it clickable. And I think that could be a huge, huge thing for advertisers and just people trying to get traffic through the use of, uh, of YouTube. So hopefully, if you're listening to YouTube, come on, let's do it. Cards ain't working, baby. Cards ain't working. Mm-hmm. Now, the end screen's fantastic. Those do work that way. You can actually put a, a, you know, some sort of icon on the end of it where the people can click and go to your website. Problem with that is the people have to reach the end of your video. And as we all know, if you've ever looked at YouTube analytics, videos start off nice and strong and then they go like this. And not that many people make it all the way to the end of your video, which means they miss your actual clickable message at the end of the video. So um, would love to see them jump on that. Are you tapping your pen? You know what? I'm tapping my hand, I think. Yes. Oh, okay. I got to stop here. Look, I'm going to take this ring off because that's what I'm tapping. Oh, it was your ring. Okay. Okay. So. Shout out um, jewelry. <laughs> no jewelry during the radio show. Yeah. So that's kind of where YouTube is at this point in time. Obviously, they've added a lot of other really cool features. For instance, um, the ability during a live video to uh, pay people directly during the video. You can just send them a tip mm-hmm. or you can pay to get their attention in a message so that they'll talk to you live on the show. So that's a very cool thing. In the future, Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, one of the things that we predicted a while back for video was, uh, you know, 360 video, and that's growing. Um, It's not nearly as big as I expected it to be at this point in time, but it is definitely growing, and I see that as a a growth potential in the future there. And hopefully we'll see a lot more uh, new features as far as interaction goes. Because that's one of the things that is, is weak there right now, especially with those, uh, those YouTube cards, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah. so that's YouTube. Now, of course, Facebook. Obviously, lots of changes have happened in Facebook over the last year. They have put a huge emphasis on video. 
They understand that that is the future of the way things are going. In fact, this very week, Instagram, which is of course a part of YouTube, just added new features to the Instagram Live platform uh, where you can now bring in guests. So if you're doing an Instagram Live, you can actually hit a plus button and bring in a guest. That was just recently announced. And uh, you'll start seeing that inside of Instagram. With Facebook, they're adding all sorts of new features all the time. You've actually got a built-in screen sharing that just was added very recently. Uh, they didn't even tell anybody, it just kind of snuck in there. And most of the time, people just kind of noticed that there was a screen share button. And so now if you start a live video inside of Facebook with your desktop, so this is not phone-based, this is desktop-based. If you start one in there, there's actually an option built in to do screen sharing. Now, obviously, we use software which does that, but now you can actually do that built into the Facebook platform, kind of like you could do with, uh, with the YouTube Hangouts at one point in time. So that's a, a change that's happened very recently. Obviously, the entire Facebook Live platform over this past year has exploded and become just a, a huge phenomenon. Um, they've added the, uh, the, the, the uh, waiting rooms, so you can actually put up a graphic beforehand saying, mm -hmm. you know, Johnny's going to go live at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So you can do all of that kind of fun stuff. Just a platform that is really growing very, very quickly. And uh, if you search news on Facebook Live, you don't see nearly as many people committing murders on it anymore. So that's a positive. You know, and, and, and you, know, you kind of laugh at that. But um, back a few months ago, I used to like to post Facebook Live news as well as YouTube news, you know, you know things that were happening on those different platforms. And when I would try to find news about Facebook Live, I would have to sift through 40 or 50 articles that were all about somebody who, you know, killed somebody else on, on Facebook Live or committed suicide on Facebook Live. And uh, you don't see that nearly as much as you used to, but uh, definitely something that's been happening quite a bit. Now, um, on another interesting note, things that are going to be changing, um, Facebook is getting a lot of pressure from certain countries to be responsible for what people put in their videos. And to me, that's a dangerous thing because, you know, their, their, their big target is quote-unquote hate speech. They don't want you putting up videos that are filled with hate speech, but what's hate speech? You know, I mean, there are some things that are obviously hate speech, but where does that start? You know, where is that line where, I don't know, this isn't hate speech, but this is. Mm -hmm. And depending upon the person, you know, they just don't like what you say. Maybe you disagree with them, and therefore, oh, that's hate speech. And the next thing you know, you're getting cut off. and. You know, and that's not right either, but the fact that some of these places are putting the pressure on Facebook itself, in other words, Facebook is going to be held responsible for hate speech that other people put up there, that's where you're going to see a lot of the issues. And, it, and it's kind of a dangerous road to go down, but something to be very careful of. You're going to need to really uh, you know, keep your stuff pretty mainstream in order to, uh, to not get hit by some over-the-top sensor, and so that's just... Uh, Something to pay attention to in the future of that. Uh, with Facebook Live, the future 3D video is again growing even bigger. Um, and here's one of the things that I really expect to change over the next year, and this has to do with any platform, and that is augmented reality videos are probably going to see a huge bump over the next few months, uh, as well as 360. And the reason I say that is um, programs like Final Cut Pro are actually going to be adding built-in 360 editing tools. The new iPhone 10 that just came out, as well as the 8, they have a lot of augmented reality stuff built into it, so people are going to be able to make videos that are very realistic with augmented reality. Um, so I see a lot of that in the future. And probably a lot of videos of you know the uh, iPhone 10's emoji stuff. I don't know if you've seen that yet, Steve, but... Yeah, I have. Where they, they scan your face and you talk and the character talks... You know, which is kind of, the, you know, basically that's the stuff that they, they would do with video games and, you know, paying millions of dollars to produce these high-end video games. And that's how they would do it with these animation tracking. And uh, now you can do it with your phone. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very interesting stuff. And I, I see that being uh, something that we'll see a lot of over the next few months is um, these, these higher-end animated type of uh, videos where people are using their phone for that. Uh, I was playing around with uh, with some of the... AR stuff this morning, as a matter of fact, it's unbelievable. And I don't even have the new phones yet, um, I, but I did realize that you can actually do it with your older phones. It's not going to be quite as accurate, but you can do things like place furniture in your room and see what it'll look like. You know, it's not going to track your room like the new phones will, but the, but it'll still put it in there. And 
I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't know if you've ever played with that, Steve, but, um, you know, you place a couch in the corner here, and once you do, you place it there, you can move your, your phone around, and you can walk around the couch and see it from different angles, and it's like it's really there in the room. It's, it's really quite impressive. And uh, I see that kind of stuff being a big, big thing in the future with all of the, uh, the video going on with that. All right, so the next one we want to talk about is, uh, we talked about it briefly, Instagram. Instagram is growing very quickly in the video and live video sector. Uh, if you're not using Instagram for videos, you probably should start. It's a great platform for that. Your videos have to be under 60 seconds. So if you're gonna use that as a video platform, maybe you're creating a 60 second version of your longer video and getting people to go to the longer video, or maybe you've just got videos that are nice and short. Instagram is a great platform for that. More and more people are looking at videos and sharing videos and liking videos there. And then they have their live platform. Very similar to Facebook Live, very easy to use. It's a live platform. Once again, you're not limited on that. You can go as long as you need to with that. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure what the limit on an Instagram Live video is if they have one. Facebook, for instance, will cut you off at four hours unless you're doing an ambient video. And, um, but but uh, Instagram, I'm not sure. I, I would assume maybe it's probably about the same. If anybody knows better, let me know. I've, I've never looked it up. But there probably is some sort of limit to that. But um, Instagram videos, remember, you do the Instagram Live, the video goes away afterwards. So yeah. not something you want to use if, it's, if you're looking for something that's going to have staying power. But uh, that's the Instagram platform. Now, the next platform we're going to talk about is, of course, Periscope. Everybody knows Periscope. Great little platform, but kind of stagnated over the last year or so. Um, what was once the absolute king of uh, live video as it became popular is now kind of a secondary note. It's kind of died off. But there's still a lot of activity there. There's still a lot of things you can do. You can have a lot of fun with it and uh, you know, get your live videos out there. You can use a platform like we use for our show here inside of Periscope. So you can do very high-end, cool stuff with it. You can collaborate. But uh, you know, a platform that is kind of struggling now. I don't, I don't know what, what you think of, of Periscope, Steve. Have you, have you used it at all? Not lately. I did a yeah. lot in the beginning. You know. I, I did too. I was doing a lot of stuff in the beginning, but it, it has kind of died out. And uh, you know, hopefully they come back because I think they can bring a lot to the table. Obviously, they're now owned by Twitter. Quite honestly, it makes me wonder how long it's going to be before it just becomes Twitter Live. I mean, yeah. I, you know, who knows? Not sure yeah. where that's going to go. Uh, the other, another platform that we can talk about, of course, Snapchat. Another good one for live video. A lot of marketers do seem to like Snapchat. I've never personally been a fan. I don't use it very often, but it is one that people do use. It is popular, and you can do live videos with it and have some, uh, you know, some pretty cool stuff. And uh, you know, it, it's just it's a fun little platform, no doubt about it. But uh, again, a platform that since Instagram started doing all their video stuff has kind of floundered a little bit, much like Periscope. So who knows? We'll see how the future goes for them, and be interesting to see if they start to really uh, make a big difference there. Another platform that has come on uh, that a lot of people aren't paying attention to, believe it or not, Daily Motion has a live platform. Mm. So Daily oh, Motion, obviously, oh. yeah. Daily Motion, obviously, a very big, strong powerhouse in the video world. They're probably, uh, you know, for traditional video sites, they're probably second only to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they're still a top 25 site in the world. So people tend to forget about it a little bit, but it is still a very big, popular site. They do have a live platform. It's not getting utilized very much now. There's not much to it. It's just a live platform, but you can definitely use that. Uh, what I tend to do with it, if you're wondering, is when we do our Facebook Lives, we, we do them just like this. We do them live. However, what we'll do in, uh, in regards to some of these others is we actually have a platform where we stream to a, this platform and this platform sends the, the signal out to multiple channels at the same time. So they'll send it out to Daily Motion, they'll send it out to Periscope, et cetera, et cetera, YouTube. And so that way you can broadcast once and send it automatically to all of them live and uh, you know, do some really cool stuff with that. So that's where we use Daily Motion Live, is by doing those types of things with it. Not a lot of really interesting things there, to be honest, but it is another platform. It has a lot of users, it's a popular site. So it's definitely one that you probably want to keep your eye on because you never know what's going to happen and if they're going to, uh, to really start to take over. 
Yes. I use it I use it for backlinking and those videos rank fairly well. Just you know, on their they, own. Especially you know? in the old days, but they do. If if you're putting stuff to daily motion, you can get a daily motion video to rank to page one pretty mm-hmm. fair you know, fairly quickly. The only issue I find with that is they don't tend to last long. So they may get to page mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. and then a week later, they, they kind of drop off. But they will get you to page one pretty quickly, which is kind of nice. Well, um, what's happened with me is my main YouTube video, I'm backlinking that to yes. another YouTube channel, and I'm backlinking it to uh, Daily Motion and VO and uh, uh, <laughs> Vimeo. Yes, VO. You know, I, I didn't plan on talking on VO. VO. Well, you the, don't uh, have to. You know, I'm just using for the it for backlinks. video, but... You know, VO, when t- I talked about uh, at the beginning, I said we'd talk a little bit about things that didn't happen that we thought were going to be big. Uh, one time years ago, I predicted VO would be one of the big platforms. V-E-O-H, by the way, if you're wondering what that is, because you've probably never heard of it. Yeah. But back in the day, it actually had the most high quality of the, the video platform. So I used to tell people, don't use that stupid YouTube thing. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of yeah. people, but the quality is terrible. Quality was bad. And, and it was bad. But VO had very good quality, and so we used to, to, uh, to push that a lot, and I used to use it quite a bit. VO, now owned by, uh, by Viacom, I believe, or at least they were. I don't know if that's still the case. No, Viacom did yeah. buy them out, so CBS yeah. has an affiliation with VO, but just a platform that's never taken off, um, been around for a long time, just never really had much popularity. So Probably 2009 or 2008, we thought it was going to be bigger <laughs> than YouTube, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah but- you know, but that was a long time ago. But what I found with ranking videos is my secondary YouTube that I'm backlinking and daily motion that I'm backlinking will rank very quickly, sometimes quicker than my main video. Yep. Uh, but then they fall off and my main yep. video moves up. So what for what it's worth for those for those that are doing that type of thing. Nice. And yeah. then uh, another platform, Stephen, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but uh, VO, V, uh, VO, Vimeo, Vimeo, sorry, Vimeo, <laughs> Vimeo. Vimeo. Yeah. Vimeo. Vimeo is actually now jumping into the live market as well, uh, and they're jumping in pretty strongly as they just went and purchased Livecaster, so uh, uh, Livestream, sorry. Livestream. So now they are the owners of Livestream. Livestream was a, an independent live streaming platform where, uh, you know, basically you were doing direct live streams. It was around before all of this, you know, social media live streaming was here and YouTube live streaming and all that. Uh, so they actually own that now. They're going to be putting a lot of weight into the live streaming market. So look for that Vimeo live streaming. Vimeo, not my favorite platform, but it's a platform that usually likes to do things that are ahead of the curve. And uh, they were the first ones to really do HD. They, you know, they were the first ones to go widescreen. So it, it's, a, it's definitely an interesting platform. It'll be interesting to see what they do with uh with live stream and, and and by the way live stream the creators of the mimo camera if you've ever seen that or the mevo camera rather mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um which is the uh, facebook and live stream camera 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 nice little um you know camera but uh, what's Beautiful a couple inches camera. tall a couple inches wide and it works We're sitting great. right over here now vimeo i've always kind of thought of it as a high-end youtube uh for creators <laughs> Yeah, what, it, it's kind know, of the RC Yeah, yeah. They're, well, yeah. you know, they've. They, I think they've changed a little bit. Back a couple of years ago, their niche was definitely the the artiste crowd. You know, they, in fact, they used to. Um, if you put a, a video that was more, you know, commercial looking or whatever, they'd actually remove it and they'd shut you right. down because, right. oh no, they, you know, we're here for we want artistic and you know they were very uppity. But it seems they've changed a lot with the uh, Vimeo Pro. They seem to be much more loose with that kind of stuff. So it's definitely becoming a platform for the higher end user. Their quality of video is very good. So it's, it, it's definitely a decent platform. A lot of marketers, uh, which is kind of ironic, a lot of marketers use that on their sales page now because it's a lot easier to um, put it up there and have it be somewhat safe from you know, being stolen and, and, what, and downloaded and everything else. But you know, nothing can right. be 100%, but you know, yeah. it is a pretty decent platform for that. And a lot of people use it, which is ironic because they used to ban you if you used it for anything like that. And now a lot of them have switched to that. So very cool stuff. So Vimeo, Vimeo Live coming soon. And now, Steve, we've come to the grim portion of our show. I feel like we need to have, like, sad music playing now. Plurk? No. No, Plurk is still alive and kicking, believe it or not. No, today, this is where we announce the, uh, the death 
Um, obviously, one of the popular live streaming formats, Meerkat, has pretty oh, much yeah. died a slow death over the last year. Uh, once thought to be the uh, you know neck and neck with uh, with Periscope, Meerkat once and for all is gone. Meerkat, of course, their uh, I, I believe their biggest claim to fame was uh, people streaming the uh, the Floyd Mayweather and uh, Manny Pacquiao fight. You know, when people would have it in their living room and they'd be streaming it to everybody for free. So that was kind of their heyday. I think Periscope was in that uh, that whole mm-hmm. storyline as well. But that was kind of their big heyday. But uh, unfortunately, Meerkat did not quite make the cut and uh, has just died a slow death. They which were is hot. Too bad. They, they were, were hot for, for, a, for a couple months. They were hot. I remember, yeah. mm-hmm. I remember speaking on stage about the future of video. And a lot of the stuff we talked about was uh, was live streaming, which, of course, we were 100% correct at that. But at the time, it was Periscope and it was Meerkat. And we were talking about how those two platforms are just going to, you know, really take off. Dominate. And, you know, we did mention that, hey, YouTube's going to step in on this. And they did. And we were right. They did step on that. But no, we were definitely wrong about Meerkat because it did not. Uh, and honestly, I don't think Periscope, had it not been bought by Twitter, Periscope probably wouldn't have made it this far either. But um Meerkat, yeah, just kind of uh, got destroyed by both Periscope and then Facebook kind of really crushing it down. So, How about Blab? Blab is another one, another, yes, another casualty. Now, for those of you who don't know what Blab is, Blab is a little bit different. And this is kind of sad because I really, really liked this platform. It was not a live platform such as, you know, people would do with Periscope. It's not just I grab my phone and I go for it. Blab was a um, um, collaboration, I guess would be the best word. It was a live streaming collaboration software uh, or website where I would get on, Steve would get on, three other guys would get on, and we would have you know, live streams of all of us collaborating in a similar manner to the way that um, Hangouts worked. Mm-hmm. But it was actually a better platform than Hangouts in the way that you could bring people in and get them out and change them around and you know, really do so some, uh, you know, very cool stuff with that just by having multiple people on there and interacting with each other. But that one uh, was more of a, a casualty of they just, you know, couldn't keep the funding up, which is kind of sad. Yeah, but yeah. So. Another casualty seems to be Hangouts. Hangouts have, uh, have, you know, just died their slow death as well. Obviously, YouTube Live really kind of uh, taking over that platform um, and changing the way that works. So that's another one that, uh, as you know, was so popular and so hot, but just kind of got crushed by all of this. Although I think YouTube Live, which still has the within YouTube the same yes. kind of Hangouts interface, I've seen a lot of people using it though. Oh yeah, um, no, it, it definitely yeah. has. But the but the Hangouts in in what they were, oh Hangouts is gone, you know, yeah. gone yeah. and uh, yeah. gone to the wayside, which is too bad. Mm-hmm. Now a couple of other future things I want to talk about before we get out of here, because boy, we're 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 really pushing a long show here, so. Um, a couple other platforms I want to talk about. Skype, obviously, is a video platform, a very different kind of video platform, a collaboration platform, but one that works very well for recording interviews with people. And then another one that I really want to talk about is Zoom. Now, if you're not familiar with Zoom, zoom.us, this is a platform that is very similar to Skype when it comes to the video portion of things, but it's uh, it's kind of a mixture of the Skype video and go to webinar because you're kind of doing this like webinar type thing uh, and recording it. And it's very cool. And the best part is for the most part, it's completely free. Now, obviously if you're doing higher end things where they're going to be longer and you know more elaborate, then they have paid platforms for that. But you can do most of the stuff that you want to do for free. So you could actually uh, have Steve and I doing a conversation, recording that, and then switching over to our, um, our desktop and showing off a piece of software, things like that. So very cool platform, zoom.us, one to look out for. Not in the same category as the other ones. It, it works very differently, but it's something that can be used in conjunction with that for recording and also in a live format. Uh, for instance, the way that, uh, the way that we do our, our live streaming here, we could actually do our interview in Zoom and bring Zoom into our software and broadcast that out live and you know, use it as a source for that. So it's a, a platform to definitely watch out for as far as that goes. So just a lot of really cool stuff out there. So biggest things, biggest takeaways from all of this, everybody's going live. 
Uh, look yeah. out for Vimeo Live. Check out Daily Motion Live. Continue to use Facebook Live. Look at all the new tools there. Instagram Live, YouTube Live for those high quality uh, live videos. You know, you really want to do some high end production. That's a great place to do that. And of course, watch out for 3D video, which is still becoming a big thing. Uh, I'm sorry, not 3D, but 360 video. And of course, the uh, aug- augmented reality is uh, going to be the big thing this year, I think, with the, uh, the new iPhones that have the augmented reality stuff built into them. And I'm sure that the, uh, some of those Android phones will really step it up on that as well. And we're going to see a lot of very, very interesting stuff. And it should be a very big next few months for the world of video. And so that's why we wanted to talk about that, as well as some of the things that uh, we've talked about in the past that didn't turn out to be so rosy in the world. So there you go. Mindset matters? Well, you know, I think it's great. I think it's great. We, I skipped the mindset matters this week just because I knew this okay. was going to be a long one. And we didn't yep. want to hold people up too long. So we'll get back to that next week. We'll bring you another Mindset Matters at the end of the show. But uh, that's what we wanted to talk about is all this new video stuff. And I think it's going to be an exciting future. Good stuff, Ray. And it's the radio show sure. about video, video marketing madness. So with Ray, the video guy, and I'm Steve Sleeper. Today's show made possible by... Today's show made possible by freevideoeditor.co. If you're looking to start doing video editing, but you don't want to spend those high video editing prices, well, then check out freevideoeditor.co, where you can download the Shotcut Video Editor and start editing today. We also have a lot of great extras that you can download to use with Shotcut, and you'll be editing like a pro in a matter of minutes. So check it out at freevideoeditor.co, and leave off the last M for... I don't see an M word there. Let's see. There's none coming. We're going to have to make one up uh, for madness. Leave off the last M for madness. Yes. And uh, with that, uh, let's get Ethel down off the shelf. Oh, Ethel, calm down there. Hold on. She's uh, she's jumping. She's running across the room to uh, play the next song here. So with that, uh, here she comes. Oh, wait. No, don't trip over that. She's dropping a bottle. I don't know why she has a bottle in her hand, but she's dropping the bottle. She's got... She's she's putting on a cap and here she goes. All right, here here she is. Yeah. Uh, Biggie. Biggie. He's Ray, the video guy. Yeah, Ray, the video guy. His skill is where it's at. Even if he's a little fat, he's filled with video expertise and has so much knowledge that you need, you know. Um, he stays sharp like a crease in his pants. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing super sick. He's Ray the video guy, yeah. Ray the video guy, yeah.